Uh, first speaker is Guillermo Lopez Lagomasino from the University of Carlos III from Madrid. And go ahead, Guillermo. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate, though I am far away. Would have been better to uh, be there with you, but well, maybe next time. So uh, the title of my talk is, Con is Convergence of Multi-Level Hermipare Approximants. Uh, so uh, this is a somewhat a new subject, but it has uh, actually what everything I'm gonna do has a, a very uh, old beginning. Uh, let me see. Uh, my slides don't move. I don't know what's the matter here. Uh, uh, what's the matter here? Oh, okay. So the outline of the talk is the following. Uh, I'll, I will give a brief introduction, then I will uh, define the kitchen systems, multi-level Hermipade approximates, state the main results, and then give a sketch of the proof of the convergence. Finally, some references. So <clears throat> let's uh, start defining a diagonal Padé approximation, though uh, most, most of the people there know very well what I'm talking about, but uh, just you know to fix idea. So uh, S is gonna be a, a Borel measure supported on the real line uh, with finite moment. And uh, by S hat, I will denote the Cauchy transform of that measure. Incidentally, uh, the measures here, which I will be talking about are measures which, which have con constant sign. They don't need to be positive, but they have to have a constant sign. For each N uh, integer non-negative, there exist polynomials Q and P such that the degree of P is not greater than N minus one, Q its degree is not greater than N, Q N is not identically equal to zero. And then this uh, interpolation condition uh, is imposed at infinity. <clears throat> and uh, then uh, the pair P and Q N defines a unique rational function Pn over Qn, which is called the nth diagonal Padé approximant of S hat. Okay. I remember that uh, the denominator of uh, these approximants, they uh, are coincide with the given n with the nth orthogonal polynomial with respect to the that measure S. Okay. <clears throat> Now, it is well known, <coughs> suppose that the convex hull of the support of S is contained in the positive part of the real line, okay? Then Stutus proved that the convergence of the sequence of Padé approximates, diagonal Padé approximates, to S hat is equivalent to the, 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 the moment problem for the sequence C nu of moments of S is determined. That is, there is only one measure, in this case S, which has that collection of moments. On the other hand, <clears throat> Karleman proved that a sufficient condition for the moment problem to be determined, that to be determined is that this series here diverges, which means that the moments can go to infinity, but not too fast. Well, of course, if my measure happens to be negative then these numbers are gonna be negative and you would have the moments, you would have to take absolute value. Uh. <coughs> 
the goal, our goal is going to be, is, is going to be to give a still just Kalimann type theorem for what we call multi-level Hermit-Fade approximates of Nikishin systems. So what is a Nikishin system? Given two measures, sigma one, sigma two, supported on intervals, delta one, delta two, actually the deltas are gonna be the convex hull of the support of the measures. And uh, these intervals are in case we will assume that in L1 of in the third, which was in its different this form, so you take the basic measure, you uh, <clears throat> multiply it by the Cauchy transform of the second one, sigma. <clears throat> Uh, uh, cost. So we have, I, I, we define the product of two measures and um, okay, <clears throat> now, now suppose that we have a collection of measures, sigma one, sigma m, uh, who support the convex hull of their support is denoted delta k. And uh, <clears throat> we will assume that two consecutive intervals uh, are either uh, empty or have at most a common endpoint, in which case uh, the condition regarding that, for instance, like in this case, that sigma two is, a, is an L1 of sigma one is imposed, okay? So uh, you define what is called the Nikitin system generated by sigma one, sigma M, sigma one is simply what, S11, S12 is going to be the product of sigma 1, sigma 2, and so on. Uh, inductively, you define M measures S1. The last one is S1M, which is going to be the product of sigma 1 times the product of the remaining one, sigma 2 up to sigma M in the given order, okay? Uh, we will also define the measure sigma JK, uh, which is what is obtained after multiplying sigma J up to sigma K, should K be greater than J, and sigma J, sigma J minus one, sigma K, if J happens to be the smaller, the, the, uh, the, the, the larger of the two. <clears throat> now let's fix, uh, uh, an interval of um, integers, not all identical equal, uh, not all zero, we're going to define uh, the length of the, of the, that multi-index as the sum of all the components of the, the multi-index in one plus nm. And <clears throat> it is easy to see that there exist polynomials a n zero, a n m, where the degree of the a and k are is uh, at most the norm of n minus one for k from zero up to uh, m minus one. And the last one has degree at most n, norm of n. We will assume that they are not all identically equal to zero. And this is called <coughs> a multi-level Hermipadea polynomial of uh, the Nikitian uh, uh, system, sigma one, sigma m with respect to n, uh, if for all j from zero up to n minus one, these linear forms have this order of interpolation at infinity. For completeness, we define a and m as simply the, the minus one to the m of a and m little a, okay? Uh, <clears throat> some known results. Liso, uh, th this, uh, th this definition coincides with, uh, well, not, not completely, but uh, uh, 
was an extension given by least of, of, a, of a previous definition, which uh, we introduced in, uh, in a paper with Sergei, uh, Sergio Medina and Jacek Gilowicz, uh, where we define for the first time multi-level Hermipane approximant uh, in connection with a, a problem of finding discrete solutions or what uh, discrete solutions for uh, the de Gasperi uh, processing equation. Uh, and Lee uh, extended this, uh, the, our definition further, which is the one that we gave before. Uh, some known results proved by Lisov in his paper are the following. Uh, the first one of these forms, a n zero, has no zero in the complement of delta one. Now the remaining a and j have exactly, for given j, have exactly n one plus n j zeros in c minus delta j plus one. They are all simple and they lie on the interval delta j. For all n, the degree of the a and j for j from zero up to n minus one exact, is exactly equal to the norm of n minus one and the degree of a and m is exactly norm of n. Which means that the system or the Nikishi system of uh, measures is perfect for this definition of uh, 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 mixed type Hermipane approximation problem. Now, uh, in that paper, Lisov proved that if the support of the measures, sigma k, the generating measures are compact and uh, they are regular in the sense of um, uh, Totik and Stahl, then, and, and you fix your attention to what are called ray sequences. That is when the multi-index, the sequence of multi-index is such that if you fix a component and you divide by the norm of the multi-index and you take limit, then <laughs> there is a, a, the limit exists, okay? For each K from one up to M. Actually, uh, Lisov, he, uh, he considered that the, the, the measures were, were such that the sigma k prime was greater than zero almost everywhere on the interval delta k, but he himself uh, said in the paper that it was sufficient to require that the measures be regular, okay? Just the simple modifications of the of his proof allow, or that in that case, to prove that the sequence of the uh, of of the forms have nth root asymptotics, and from there uh, you can derive that <coughs> the ratios a and j over a n m converges uh, on each compact subset of the complement of uh, <coughs> delta M to this, the Cauchy transform of SMJ plus one, okay? There is nth root, the limb soup exists and it's a uh, number smaller than one, which means that the uh, convergence <coughs> <coughs> occurs with geometric rate. Now, uh, our theorem says the following. So we will not require that the, the, the support of the measures be uh, compact or any condition on the, of regularity even on the measures, okay? So here I'm going back to the definition of um, given before at the beginning, okay? Uh, of multi-level Hermipade approximants, the measures are completely arbitrary, well, except for what I will say here. So uh, suppose that we have a Nikishin system and a sequence of multi-indices such that um, 
for, for all j's from one up to n minus one, the component nj plus one of the multi-index is less than or equal to uh, the previous one plus a number, a constant, which does not depend on the multi-index. So for instance, suppose that the, uh, the components are simply decreasing, okay? Or not increasing uh, with n equal to zero, then uh, such sequences are good for our purpose. <clears throat> now we will assume that the moments of sigma m satisfy Kalman's condition, or the interval delta m minus one is bounded away, uh, is bounded, and it does not intersect the interval delta m. Then uh, the limit exists just as uh, before, and it's precisely the same, of course, the same, uh, the Cauchy transform of the same measure, okay? Given in the, we deduce from least of result, except that here we are uh, assuming uh, in some, in some way, uh, more liberty in the collection of the of the multi index you know, of the multi indices, and of course on the measures. Okay. Uh, in if if the multi indices are such that n j is greater or equal to n j plus one plus one, so this means that. Uh, that the, the, the multi indices are strictly decreasing, okay? But if this happens for each j from one up to n minus one, then all the zeros of the, these polynomials a and k are simple and they interlace those of a and m. Okay, now I will just sketch the uh, proof because I'm, I'm almost finished my time. Um, by the way, are you listening to me? Of course. Yes. Okay, yes, are. <laughs> okay. So we have the following lemma. So let's fix a multi-index. I will denote by eta, and j, the sum of the components up to the jth one, okay? And this for j from one up to m. And then zero is, uh, is equal to zero by definition. <clears throat> then for each j from zero up to m minus one, <coughs> there exists a polynomial w and j of degree eta and j whose zeros are on delta m minus one, the, the last but uh, the one, one, not the last interval, but the previous one, uh, such that this ratio is big O of one over z to the eta n j plus one plus one, okay? And this is a holomorphic. In other words, you can find a polynomial uh, which uh, interpolate a and j on the interval delta m minus one and of degree sufficiently high so that when you take this uh, ratio, you get big O of one over this quantity. Uh, Okay, now the proof uh, for J equals zero, this is true simply from the definition. If you assume that it holds for some J from zero up to M minus two, then uh, from this or interpolation condition, you get these orthogonality conditions. These orthogonality conditions imply that uh, this, Uh, 
Oh, uh, there is a typo here in the in the in the. Um, so the zeros of W and J are on delta J, not on delta M minus one. Sorry, sorry. Okay, the zeros of this polynomial are on the interval delta J. So you get these uh, orthogonality conditions. This implies that this form has at least n eta n j zeros on the interval delta j plus one. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, there exists a polynomial w n j plus one of degree greater or equal to this quantity with simple zeros on delta j plus one such that this form divided by this new polynomial is holomorphic in the complement of delta j plus two. And this together with the definition of the uh, forms, you get that this ratio is gonna be big O of one over Z to the eta n j plus two plus one. You get eta n j plus one from the orthogonality conditions and the other eta j plus two, n j plus two, uh, orders, you get it from the definition, okay? Uh, so this, this proves already the, the lemma, except for the, the, the fact that the degrees are exactly equal to eta and j, but and this is a simple consequence of the fact that since this form is precisely this polynomial and its degree is at most norm of n, then if you have too many orthogonality conditions, you get that a and m is gonna be identically equal to zero. But then if a and m is uh, identically equal to zero, all the a's have to be identically equal to zero. And this is not possible because from the definition, the vector of polynomials a and zero, a and m, is not identically equal to zero. Okay, now I'm gonna finish with this. I'm just gonna prove the theorem in the case when J is equal to N minus one. And that comes directly from this property. <coughs> Notice that if J is equal to N minus one, the form A N, J, minus, J plus one, uh, that is A and M minus one, reduces to what I have here in the numerator. Divided by this, according to the, uh, the lemma, is big O of one over Z to the norm of N plus one. Now, the polynomials A and M minus one and A and M are of degree at most norm of n minus one and norm of n respectively. So this means that a n m minus one over a n m is the uh, multiple point for the approximate of m to points at infinity and the zeros of the power of W1. Then from results of uh, the convergence of multiple approximates, if the moments of sigma M are by Kellerman's condition, or this interval is bit away from delta M, then you get convergence of, of the multiple point by the and that's that's the proof. okay in the case when um, in the case when you are you, for other values of j there is the order of quantity and then you have to use um, some uh, additional uh, results, okay? 
So in, 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 the, in the case for general J, what you can see is that this is big O of one over Z to the norm of N plus one minus L is some integer, which does not depend on the multi-index. This is sufficient to prove a convergence in capacity. And you see, are in a certain reconvergence in compact subsets, and that's what we uh, we use in this case. In the when multi Then uh, there is no D here. You can show that L is equal to zero and it's the same situation as for J to M minus one. You get exactly uh, uh, and uh, uh, we need uh, this. this, this this, this was one of the results in my PhD thesis with Gonchar from 1979. There we study multipoint by the approximants for functions of Stilkes type. And in this paper with uh, Jorge Bustamante, we proved the uh, convergence of Hermi Pade approximants for Nikishin system for type two Hermi Pade approximants. That was in 1994. This is Lisov's paper, and this is a paper with uh, Sergio and Jacek Ismigielski, which uh, I mentioned before, where we first introduced the notion of uh, multi level Hermipade approximates. Okay, thank you very much, and sorry for the inconveniences. Thank you, Guillermo. So at the end, we also had a little bit of uh, sound problem. Uh, so I think that because of this technical problems and delays, uh, we should move on unless somebody from the audience has an urgent question to ask. Uh, online audience. Okay, sorry, dear I'm very thank sorry. You again and for all this effort and thank you very much. Okay.